Hey guys, thanks for joining on. Uh, we're going to go through quite a few uh, cool things today. We're going to be talking about uh, really Zoom and interviews and doing them remotely. So some really good content we'll get onto. I think there's going to be a few people on the session. I can see we've got Luke, Susan, Amy, Pam, uh, Patty. We've got Bronwyn from New Zealand. A little shout out for Ray White agents over there. So how are you doing well there, Bronwyn? Um, we're from the same country. So a few people jumping on, so I'll give everyone a couple minutes before we get started. Um, what we're going to go through, just for the people that have just joined on, is interviews and doing them over Zoom. Okay, so this is a big topic that a lot of people are asking about. We've created some really good resources about this, and I'll kind of unpack that resource today. Um, but I'll also put a recording of this uh, up into the Facebook group at some point as well, so people can check it out if they weren't able to attend live. There's going to be some really good content going into that Facebook group. Okay, so purpose of the session is really to educate you guys on how to do interviews remotely over Zoom. Okay, now I see there's still a few people jumping on, so we'll get started, like I said, in a few minutes. Uh, but feel free to say hey in the chat box, guys. Um, I'll put a little message in there now. Hey, team. Cool. Feel free to say hi. Feel free to say where you're from. Um, any sort of wins, successes, achievements that you've been sort of getting this week in your business. Uh, could be with Parkbench, could be outside of Parkbench. Let me know. Uh, could even just be mindset. You know, things that you're feeling like you're doing well with. Uh, I know for myself, uh, there you go, Kia ora Bronwyn. Um, I know for myself, uh, if I'm looking at this all day and I'm just scrolling through Facebook, I don't feel good. You know, I want to be, I want to be informed for sure, but I don't want to be like, Ugh. so I'm trying to come up with a bunch of content for you guys as well to keep myself busy. Uh, not just for you guys, but for my sanity too. So feel free to say hi in the chat box guys. We've had a few people jump on. So we've got Susan, Amy, Santi's on. We've got Patty, Pamela, Luke, Gail, Frank, Deborah, Bronwyn, Bill, uh, Bethany and myself. So welcome on team. We're going to be getting into Zoom interviews today, and I think this is probably a good time to get started with this. Typically, this session is what's going to be called a getting things done session, where it's focused on you guys getting things done. Uh, we're going to make an exception today, and we're going to go through more of an instructional session about Zoom. So what I encourage you all to do is to fire away uh, questions in the chat box when you got them. I might not answer it right away, but I'll make sure to incorporate it into what I'm doing, uh, just so that way everything flows nice and smoothly. Okay, so this is all about Zoom. First and foremost with Zoom, we gotta figure out, is this the right platform for you? Okay, so I'm gonna set up my screen share here and you'll still see my face, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to zoom.us. Now, Zoom is a really cool company because in this time where everyone's sort of having to go remote, uh, what they're doing is they're positioning themselves to help as many people as possible by offering a lot of their services for free. Okay, so I'm going to put this link into the chat box for you guys to check out in your own time too. Uh, but I'm going to show you like the, the pricing and where to go to get it for free and things like that. Okay, but Zoom is actually what we're using right now. So it's very similar to uh, any other coaching sessions you would have joined. The difference is that you'll be doing an interview over it potentially. Now, the way that this works to get this uh, event like for yourself is you can click on sign up. It's free. That's where you're going to go. I already have a, um, a login, so I'm not necessarily going to go there. I'm just going to jump straight to plans and pricing. So what you can see here is sort of the breakdown of the differences between free versus X amount per month uh, for pro business, etc. Now for the free version, that's pretty much what you'll be wanting. Um, it hosts up to 100 participants. So I think you're probably not going to interview 100 people at the same time. So you should be fine there. You can have as many meetings as you want. That's unlimited. And it does have a limit though, 40 minutes on any meeting. So you want to make sure then that your interview is not going to uh, sort of cross over. All right. So that does also apply to the very starting point of when you join on. Okay. So you've opened the meeting. It goes all the way until uh, the end of it. So 40 minutes later on. If your interview is still going and it gets to that 40 minute buffer period because you started the interview 30 minutes into the meeting and you're, you're still going there, that's something that's gonna potentially impact the quality of that interview. So it's a very, very important thing to bear in mind. The free version has a limit of 40 minutes uh, for any interview that you're doing or any Zoom meeting that you're hosting. Now, if your interviews are five or 10 minutes long, you're gonna be fine. 
okay? You're not really gonna need to worry about that so much. Just make sure you're doing it in the middle and giving yourself enough time to introduce them and coach them through joining on all the way through to sort of closing the interview process out as well, okay? Now you've also got online support. Their support team is actually very, very responsive. Uh, now bear in mind, they are getting a flood of people using this service, but they have phone numbers, email addresses, live chat that you can reach out to, and I would recommend using them because I use them all day long, okay? So that's a little bit about the pricing. I'll put that into the chat box as well in case you guys are wanting to find that. Um, but free is really the main thing that you're going to need, but you can obviously go to the paid version if you're wanting to have these extra uh, sort of little bits and pieces there, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of actually, if you were doing a Zoom meeting, setting it up, okay? Now, I'm going to be building a lot off this Help Center article, which I've created uh, this week for you guys, and I'll also put this into the chat box for you guys to pinch and use later, but you can always find this in the Help Center. So help.parkbench.com, you can type in the uh, sort of keyword of Zoom, and you'll find this in there. Now, first and foremost, you need to have obviously signed up for Zoom and downloaded the application on your device first. If you haven't done this, uh, what will happen is that you'll probably be frantically stressing about if you were doing that interview in five minutes time, like, oh, I need to get it all set up. So make sure to do this early, okay? Have a play around with it first. Okay? You can even do that with your phone uh, where you have it on your computer and then join as like an attendee on your phone. That's totally fine, okay? Now, if you are doing the interview on your phone, it is going to present differently than what I'm going to go through today. What I'm going through today is going to be catered to using a... Um, sort of like laptop or a desktop computer, okay? But this is the sort of view that you're gonna see, and this is what happens every time I am opening a meeting. First and foremost, once you've opened up the Zoom application, you're going to see a big box that looks like this. This is gonna give you several options for you to really create the piece of content. First and foremost, you're wanting to make sure that you are setting up a meeting first. There's two ways to do this. You can either just start it and be like, hey, join on, here's the link, or you can schedule it. Now, when you schedule this, what happens is that you can actually send the inf information and invitation to them via like Gmail, okay? Via email, nice and clear. They just have a link similar to how you joined, they click on, it's very clear, easy, and it's in your calendar too. But either option is up to you. My recommendation is though that if you are doing these Zoom meetings, use a different link each time. So for my coaching sessions, I have the same one, just so it's nice and clear, so you know which ones to join onto, you know it's gonna bring you into the same meeting each time. But if you're backing up your interviews, and you've got an interview starting at, at one o'clock, got an interview starting at 1.30, at two o'clock, because you're just powering through them that day, and it's all on the same link, well then you might have people joining on when one interview hasn't necessarily finished. So that's something to bear in mind. Now, a question in the chat box, which is a very good question. Does the interviewee need to have Zoom to interview them? No, not at all. All they need to do is click on the link. They will have to download the application, but they don't have to have an account or anything like that, okay? Uh, basically, there's a lot of people potentially on the session that don't have Zoom accounts, but they're engaging their own as well. So that's the same sort of view. What you're seeing right now is what they are gonna see in the interview. Obviously, you're not gonna go through a Help Center article though. Now, I believe that you can invite using other email um, options as well. There is like Yahoo Mail, and then there's all, another one that says default, um, which might even just give you the URL just to send through to someone. So it's, it's nice and clear and nice and simple. Um, so you can invite through other options. Now, once you have set up your meeting, and this is something that all of you will have actually had to do to join on. Uh, first and foremost, you're gonna join on. If I've not shared my screen, it'll either be black and have someone's name or even my face, or it will just have a white background. Okay, so when that occurs, you'll see a little thing that appears in front of them that says join with computer audio. If they don't click this, they will not be able to hear you and you will not be able to hear them. It's pretty much just like a full on lockdown of audio. So this is something that is prompted anytime they jump on, you guys click it every time you join the session, uh, and it is where they have to join with their computer audio. Okay, awesome. So that's a really, really important step. 
a uh, little bit of feedback as well because I don't use Outlook. Frank said I invited with Outlook and it didn't go through. That's unfortunate. Well, what you can do is start the meeting or schedule it in your calendar and then you can just invite them to it. So if you were to grab the link, you can put it into your calendar and then just add them as an invitee, which is oftentimes what we'll do when we're scheduling someone to join a coaching call. Uh, but that's maybe something the support team can get into in a little bit more detail um, just to make sure all those steps are covered. But uh, there's, there's plenty of ways you can do this. You can create a unique link and then just send it to them later on in a separate email you make yourself. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Now, further down, uh, we've got the join audio section. That's what you're first going to see. As the person starting the meeting, you have to do this as well. Okay, so make sure that you join your computer audio because if you don't, they can't hear you. You won't be able to hear them. Now, if you are planning on doing a video interview, you need to turn your camera on. Now, this is obviously something that is only going to work on a device which has a webcam. If you don't have a webcam, unfortunately, you won't be able to go on camera. They might be able to, uh, but you won't be able to. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind. Okay, so you'll find that in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen typically. And now on my uh, sort of screen here, it might look a little bit different, but you can just move your mouse down to the bottom of the screen and you'll find the option to turn on your webcam. You can actually do this now if you want to uh, do like to see what it looks like. Pamela says, so obviously the person interviewed needs to have a camera, microphone, headset. They don't necessarily have to have a headset, uh, but they will need to have a microphone in the resource that they're using because otherwise they won't be able to be heard. Now, with that being said, they can join on their phone, which you know has a camera and you know has a microphone. I would just suggest that you don't do it on yours. You want to be using your laptop or your, your desktop computer because you can join using this. A lot of people actually join my sessions using these as well. Because what you're recording is not what they're going to see. It's a view that you're going to put on. Okay, so it's going to be recording your screen, not theirs. So that's the nice little workaround in case they don't have like a headset and the right equipment. They've only got their phone. Cool. Now, once you've turned the camera on, what will happen is that you'll pop up on screen and you'll see yourself here. To give you a bit of an idea of how that looks, uh, it'll show you like this here. So you can see behind me, I'm, I've gone into the invite section, but behind me, it has just like my face or behind that image has just my face. So that's some of the things you want to be seeing first. Okay. Now I'm going to briefly stop my screen share and we're actually going to change sort of the way that you guys are uh, viewing zoom. So now we've got no um, screen share in front of us. You most likely see either my face or someone else's name or someone else's camera in front of you. The way to fix this, because if you don't want to have just them on camera or you don't want it to be just you on camera, and we can all do this right now, is on Zoom, I want you to move your mouse around in the center of the screen. And in the top right corner, you should notice that there are two little symbols. One looks like a Rubik's Cube. Uh, so it's like three by three little squares. And there's another one that has like uh, arrows that are extending out. I want you to click on the Rubik's Cube or at least put your mouse over the top of it. Because what you'll see when you put your mouse over there is that it says gallery view. Now, gallery view is going to change the layout and cameras uh, and view that you see. So once you've clicked on that, what you'll notice is that we get to this big version of the Brady Bunch where you've got a bunch of different cameras and options. and You can see uh, everyone that's on there. Now, we had a, a great meeting at the beginning of this week with our team and we had all our team members join zoom all the cameras on and so it was very much like Brady Bunch because it's like this person here and that person next to you um, so for us there's a lot of us you can see a lot of them however if you were doing an interview with just one person what is going to happen is that instead of the big Brady Bunch view you're just going to have two options one is going to be you one is going to be them so it's nice and clear it's only gonna have all these other options here if you were to, um, I suppose, uh, have other people that have joined on, okay? So that's something to bear in mind. If you don't wanna have a million people on there, restricted to just the two of you, okay? So 
By now, you've probably changed it over to the gallery view. I encourage you to still do that. If you've not done it yet, it's actually worthwhile to see. Um, and it's something you can even do with your teams and people that you're working with. I'm actually gonna be doing this with family that are back home in New Zealand. So I can see my sister, my mom, my stepdad, everyone, all at the same time, I'd have a little conversation. I did the same thing for my wife's birthday. We had a bunch of people. It's actually quite a cool little thing to use. So particularly in times like this, Zoom is a, a really great resource to actually connect and see each other. Cool. So. That's a little bit about this view here. Okay, so this is what you wanna set up before they join onto the call. Okay, because otherwise, if you are on that solo or speaker view, uh, it's either just gonna show you or just gonna show them. Now that is an absolutely valid way to do the interview where it's gonna jump between people, uh, but Zoom is gonna try and judge who the camera should be on. And sometimes it'll be on your face and you're just sort of like, listening to them speak and you're just smiling along and you're like, well, I don't, I don't really want that shot, but Zoom might just do that because it hears noise in the background of your environment, okay? So that's something to bear in mind, okay? Now, on this view as well as the host, and you might even be able to do this yourself, if you move your mouse around, you may see the option to invite people actually during your, your meeting that you've opened. So this is another option for you. You can create a private meeting and you can only limit it to the people that have been invited, but you invite them once the meeting's up. So you tell the person, hey, I'm gonna send you a link at this time, just click on it, and it'll bring you right into the interview. So down the bottom of the screen, it might not be viewable for you, but when you're typically uh, the host, you will see this down the bottom. I'll show you this in the Help Center article soon, okay? So I'm gonna bring up my screen share again, and we'll jump back into exactly what I've said. So the view that you'll see if you've not yet turned on your camera is you'll have this option to invite someone here down the bottom. Okay, so start videos on the left, invites down the bottom. You can also see the number of participants, but for your interview, you're not really going to need to get into, uh, I suppose, high numbers. I'll see if I can zoom in for you guys as well, if that's a little bit clearer. So you have the option to invite people down here. Now further down, once you've invited someone, this brings up the option. So like I said, Yahoo, you've got Gmail and you've got default Gmail there. You can also just grab the, the link to the session and send that to someone as well. Okay. So at this point, what you wanna have done is you wanna have turned on the meeting, like not right now, but when you're doing the interviews, what you wanna have done is turn on the meeting and turn on your camera, check your audio, make sure it's all looking and sounding good. You've done your hair and everything like that. Uh, and then what you're wanting to do next is invite someone. Now, once you have invited someone and they click on that link, they most likely will have to download the app first. That's fine, takes no time at all. And uh, you're gonna know though that they've joined because the view will change. Instead of the camera looking like just you, it will have you at the top and it will have the person, either their name or their camera in front of you. Now that's where you wanna to go to that gallery view at the top. So in case you didn't see that before, you'll have the option to click on gallery view at the top there. That will change the view, if we scroll down, I've highlighted that here, to side by side. So you'll have two black bars at the top and then side by side images there. Okay, very beautiful looking face there, frowning as always. So you can see this person's um, option here, me there. If they have not turned on their camera, what will happen is that it just will say their name. So that's where you wanna coach them, okay? A little bit about this will be telling them, okay, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that, just like what I'm doing today. So you're gonna tell them, hey, so down the bottom of your screen, if you don't see it, just move your mouse around. You'll have the option to click on the little camera symbol, and you can even just use this article to like help them out, okay? Now, at this point, they're on, their audio's on, hopefully their camera's on by now, your camera's on, you're in the right view. It's time to actually start doing the interview. But before we do that, you need to do something that's really important, and that is press record. The same as if you were doing an interview over your phone uh, or you're using a transcribing app or anything, you need to press record because otherwise it's not gonna take in the content. So record is found down the bottom of the screen and you can download it either to the cloud or straight to your device. Uh, it's totally up to you, uh, but this will be a video file that you can edit later on. Okay, so once you're ready to go, you press record. Now for me, this is a little bit of, of advice for what I would do. I would actually um, press record uh, like right away. I would just open the meeting, turn all my stuff on, press record, even if they haven't joined yet, just get it going. So I don't have to worry about it, don't have to forget about it. And then once they join, we'll talk a little bit about the process and how it's gonna work. 
and then I'll count them down and I'll say, great. So we're going to get started uh, shortly. I'll give us a countdown. I'll go like this, three, two, one, and then I won't say anything and then I'll start. That sound clear to you? And then that way they're like, okay, cool. I understand the process and you're recording this the whole time. The same would work as if you were recording this on your device, on your phone, and you're basically telling them the story about what's going to happen. And maybe you're doing like a lightning round beforehand to sort of loosen them up or, or whatever. So it's having these questions first, fired away, make them comfortable, make them feel good. So that way they know, cool, I know when it's going to start. And then you don't have to worry about, oh, I forgot to press record because you've done it at the beginning. Okay, get it done early. So you press record then. Now, I'm putting links into this Help Center article for you guys as well. You can access this at any time uh, to kind of help you troubleshoot issues. Okay, the best team to connect with with issues with Zoom because they will happen from time to time. I've had sessions canceled uh, because Zoom has incorporated, I think it's happened like twice out of my thousands of sessions that I do. Uh, if you do need help, this is their help center straight away there. Now, another tip is give yourself time to set up before starting the interview and know that it's limited to 40 minutes. Okay, now you could do a sound check for yourself as well. So you can just say, hey, just want to double check. Can you just state, uh, you know, your name just so I can hear your audio, something along those lines. Okay. So I'm going to show you an actual example of an interview and what this would look like and what it would look like for what you've recorded from the very beginning of this process all the way through to the end. So we're going to get into that now. It's a, sh it's like a, a little video that I've created just to give you a live example of what you can expect from the content that you're creating. Okay. So, We'll get into that shortly. Uh, Pamela asks, can you invite with Outlook or does it need to be Gmail? I believe if you click on default email, that'll give you the option. However, if you can't for whatever reason, just click on copy URL down the bottom left and that'll give you the link, which you can then just put into an email and send to that person. Yeah, so that's sort of your, your workaround. Cool. Uh, so I'm gonna get into this shortly. Any questions, any thoughts? It could be wacky, wonderful, weird, whatever it is, fire those questions away. Um, we'll sort of pause here for a short while. However, if you are good to go and you don't have questions, just let me know in the chat box saying, nope, sweet, all good to go. And we can move on to uh, looking at this video and, and I'll do different pauses and unpack it as we go through. Cool, awesome. So let's see these questions here. Um, now, Patty says, how do I create a private link? So the way to create a private link is back at this point here. You can either click schedule and put it into your calendar, or you can click on this little icon down here where it has this little um, sort of arrow. That'll give you the option to either use what's called your personal meeting ID, which is a unique ID that you can use over and over again, or you can create a custom one. Um, so you can use that as well. Only use this option if you're like just starting the meeting now and you're going to do the interview right away. Use this option if you're wanting to plan it ahead in the future. Does that make sense, Patty? Cool. Uh, Bethany says, when you click on the URL, does it have a password or does it just give it? That's actually an option that you can enable or disable. Uh, I think the default is that people can just join on uh, if they have the link. However, you can password protect it if you want, but if you're making unique links for each uh, interview that you're doing because you're scheduling them in your calendar, you won't need to um, because like the only way that someone would join onto that meeting is if they guessed a uh, nine or 10 digit code, uh, which is like the meeting ID and we're just putting that into Zoom, but that doesn't really happen. Now, if you really wanna be sort of dotting the I's, crossing the T's, what you can do is that there's an option down the bottom where it says manage participants. Now, when you click on this, it shows you everyone that's on the session. So if I do this right now, uh, I can see we've got 19 people on, but there's an option at the bottom of this, which basically lets you lock the meeting. So after the person's joined, you can lock it. And then that way you're, you're safe in the knowledge that no one else can enter that meeting. Uh, if they were to have hypothetically guessed it, but that won't really happen. I've never had that happen before. Um, yeah, that's just something to, to bear in mind, um, just as like a little workaround. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so Frank talked about something as well, which relates to doing the interview, which is a great question. Lighting. 
where should the lighting be? Mine always has shadows. So I'm fortunate that I have a light that's literally pointing right at my face uh, in my house. And that's kind of why I've set my environment up here. Lighting will impact the quality of the interview. If, if I were to change position, you'll find that it can become a lot more shattered on the side, particularly if it's a very gray day outside. So you might even want to sort of do like a uh, little shift around in your, your home with any sort of standing lights that you've got just to make sure you position them. Typically with lighting, you want to have, I mean, if you had the option, you'd have three. You'd have one that's face on and ones that are sort of coming at your different angles. I'll uh, show you a good example of this. And this is a really good resource as well. Uh, this one here. Cool. So this is more of a like very technical uh, resource that you can use. And if anyone's interested in it, let me know. It goes into everything technology. It talks about lighting and sound and stuff like that. But you can see this is kind of, these are the max number of cameras that you could possibly, or sorry, lighting resource that you could possibly need. But so long as you have it on your face, that's the main thing. You don't want it beside you, uh, above you, or behind you as a solo light. Because if you were to do that, it really changes the look of what's going on. So say you're doing an interview and these are all windows, it's not gonna look very clear uh, and very, very nice. Uh, but on that same note, Zoom has a nice little feature which you can turn on, which is kind of like a uh, your own personal uh, beautician. And they have this setting which basically like, I think it's called removes blemishes or something like that. And it makes you look a lot prettier than you do normally. So feel free to use that as well. Uh, that's in the settings of Zoom. I'm pretty sure the free version should have that option too. Okay, but uh, if you're interested in this, like I'll actually download this and I'll see if I can put it into the chat box now. Um, but this will just be a resource that you can use uh, for a, a lot of things that relate to the interview process. I'll see if I can put this into the, uh, into the chat box. Cool. So it should have popped up in there as well. Awesome. So any other questions, guys? Otherwise, what we'll do is we'll actually get into kind of auditing this interview that I did with uh, Jessie. And some of you have worked with her, which is awesome. So you'll, you'll see her face and my face having a little conversation. Now, this is not a, a great interview by any means. I just asked her three questions and I actually forgot the questions I was going to ask Jesse before I did the interview and just asked her three others. Um, so it's a little bit fun, but um, we'll go through this now. If there's no other questions, I'm going to adjust my screen share so that way you guys can hear the uh, audio as well from this video and uh, we'll get into it. Awesome. Uh, so Bethany, you can find the document. You should be able to see it in the chat box. If not, uh, I'll make sure to upload it into the Parkbench Local Leaders Facebook group. Um, and instead of just giving you the name, I'll give you the link to it as well. Cool. But it's just called Parkbench Local Leaders. Uh, if you search that, you'll find our good old Facebook group here. Awesome. So time to close down a few of these tabs. You can see this is just loading up there. That's the group there, Bethany. And let's get into this video. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure that screen share is all on right. Uh, please do let me know if the sound is too loud uh, or too quiet. For those that are on camera, just thumbs up, thumbs down. That's all I'm really needing. Uh, or you can message in the chat box as well, okay? So I'm gonna press play and I'm gonna pause this. And I'm gonna maximize this as well. So it's nice and clear, as easy as I can uh, for you guys to see, all right. Hey guys, so today, awesome. And one little thing I'm gonna preface, you're gonna hear my voice a few times, so I'll try and sort of announce when I'm speaking again. Um, but this is gonna show you like a little tutorial about what you would see if you recorded an interview. What we're gonna go through is setting up a Zoom interview. So if you're interviewing from home, you're wanting to connect with a business owner who potentially is also at home, this is a great strategy. Zoom has some free options which can be really beneficial to use right now. Just checking, audio is fine. Cool, awesome, let's get into it. Now, with Zoom, what you're wanting to do is first and foremost, turn on your camera. Now, what the process for that is, is once you move your mouse around, uh, when you've opened up Zoom, you'll have the option down the bottom to start video. Now you need to be using something which has the functionality for video, ideally a laptop uh, or a computer with a webcam is perfect. Now once you turn your video on, you're gonna see yourself 
right? Right and center, it's gonna highlight you. Now, this isn't just what you wanna be doing, you wanna obviously have that person on the screen and you wanna actually invite them too. So what you'll be able to do is grab the Zoom meeting ID, which is found at the top of Zoom when you are using it. Now, I don't believe you'll be able to see mine, but each meeting will have its own ID. You also have the option to invite people which can be found down the bottom of the screen. When you move your mouse around, there is the option to invite people. You may not be able to see that on this view right now, because it's just billing me. So a few things we have already gone through uh, in regards to sort of setting up these meetings, which is good, but it's just to show you what you'll see. Because if you press record before you put your camera on, it's a black screen. That's all it's recording, it's recording nothing. But once you turn your camera on, then it will start to record what Zoom can pick up. Okay, so I'll press play, I'll let this play through. As we're going through, fire away questions as well. Okay, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invite a team member into this meeting, and we're gonna act as if this is an interview. Okay, so you can use this time to get yourself set up, then you send them the link to join the meeting. Now, once they've received that, all they need to do is click on it. Sometimes it'll ask them to download a um, sort of application, so that way Zoom can run on their device, but it's really simple to do and it's free. It doesn't cost them anything at all, okay? So once uh, this has been received by the interviewee, ideally you wanna set this up earlier, they'll actually jump onto the session. So now you can see that we've got either myself or Jesse on the screen here. Hey Jesse, how you doing? Hey Matt, I'm great, how are you? Awesome, I'm doing well. So when you are not on gallery view, what happens is that the focus is on the person that's speaking and then as soon as Jesse spoke, the camera changes to her. So that's what we call speaker view. Now, if you're wanting gallery view, which I'm gonna get into shortly, we're gonna change from that sort of one, 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 one approach to having both on the camera at the same time. So both are viable options for your interview, really depends on what you're wanting to do. Now, one of the things that Jessie will have had to do when she joins on the session, just like ourselves, will actually click on a little link uh, or a little pop-up that says join with computer audio. That's really important because otherwise they won't be able to hear you and you won't be able to hear them. Okay, but Jesse's taking care of that, which is awesome. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is make sure that we're nice and clear. Now, this isn't something that Jesse has to do, but for ourselves as the person recording this, we need to navigate down to the bottom of our screen and there's a little icon that says record. Now, I've already done that for my one, but you'll be able to do that yourself, okay? But once it's recording, you know then you're on camera. It is absolutely fine to be talking during this period and not doing the interview uh, yet, because you will get onto that later on. We can always edit this off. But one thing you really need to do is to make sure that you change to what's called a gallery view. Now a gallery view will be found in the top right corner up here if you move your mouse around. Quick little note, it flips the direction. I do my, know my left from right. Uh, it will flip the direction when you're pointing to things. So if you ever hear me say like pointing into the top right corner and I'm pointing into like a, a different one for your view, like it just flips it for you. Around, there's like a little Rubik's cube and it says gallery view. Once you click on this, it'll change the layout of the screen. Now it might not necessarily do this for Jessie. She might have to do that herself, but what it's done for us is it's changed to show me on one side and Jessie on the other. So that way it's nice and clear to see both of us at this interview. Okay, so just to repeat that, you wanna make sure it's on record, which you can do at the bottom of the screen, and then you wanna click in the top right corner where it says gallery view. Now at this time, you might be sort of introducing the idea of the interview in a little bit more detail uh, than when you were initially booking it, kind of telling your person that you're interviewing a little bit more information. But uh, once you're ready, what you're gonna do is just count it down, okay? so. I've already sent my questions to Jesse that I'm gonna ask. Uh, so really right now, it's just a case of doing that interview. So what I would recommend, and this is actually something that I do before every session, is just make sure to clear your throat so that way you don't get all gargling as you go through. Uh, you check that the other person is ready to go, and then you get started once you're, you're nice and happy with the, the shot that you're in. Because if you want it to be looking like, like this, or if you wanna have a different background, make sure that's nice and clear. Also look for the lighting. My lighting's okay. You can see there's a bit of lighting coming on one side, not so much on the other. Might want to change that if I had the ability to, but overall we're doing, we're doing all right here. Uh, so let's get started. So I'm gonna count us down, and then I'm gonna do an introduction. I'm gonna do a Q&A, just for a couple of questions, and then I'll do a close down. Okay, so for the context of this interview, I'm gonna be interviewing Jessie in her role 
as the client success coach at Park Range. But we're going to talk a little bit more about the neighborhood itself. Okay. <clears throat> so, you ready to go, JC? Oh, I'm ready. Awesome. So, that's a really important step as well, guys, when you're doing these interviews. Check to see the person is ready to, before you start. You say, are you ready to go? Uh, because they might be needing to address something. You don't want to have one of those situations where they are thinking, cool, before we get started, I'm just going to quickly go to the bathroom or I'm going to make sure this is out of the way or adjust my environment. Uh, you want to give them that, that second to, to make a change. So first things first is that I'd count them down because you can edit this off. I'm going to go three, two, one, and then I'll stop and then start the interview. So it's nice and clear. Okay. So three, two, one, looking at the camera. Hey guys, this is Matt from Remax West Realty. And today I have the pleasure of being able to sit down and interview Jesse Olson, who works at parkbench.com. She's one of the amazing client success team members, specifically her job is as a client success manager. So super pumped about this interview. Really excited to sit down with her today. How's it going today, Jesse? I'm doing really great. Thanks for having me, Matt. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Uh, it's nice day being confined in here. It's nice and bright and sunny. That's all I can really ask for. So what I wanted to, to do for this interview is just really learn a little bit more about your, your role and learn a little bit more about what you love in the area. So tell me, what's your favorite thing about your job? What do you love most about it? I really love, especially in a time where things are a little quieter <laughs> in the office, uh, I love that I get to talk to people all day. So I think I love connecting with people from across Canada, across the States, and really having conversations that are specific to how they're doing and what's going on with them and their business. And that's really what I'm enjoying right now. Fantastic. Awesome. And what about the area? What do you, do you, what do you love so much about or the most about Toronto? You know, you've, you've, I know that you've lived here for a little while. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so I've been in Toronto now for about six years, and I think my favorite part of it is really all of the different things that are going on. So I think even in a time like this where we're being a little bit quiet at home, there's still really, really cool stuff happening online where there's different community groups and different organizations that are finding ways for people to stay connected. I feel like in a city like Toronto, there's so many people with so many different skills and creativities that there's always really cool things going on, so there's mm -hmm. never a dull moment. Nice. And what would be your favorite thing to do in the, in, in where you live in your area in Toronto? Yeah. So right now, like I think my favorite thing is live comedy or live music. So the cool thing about online is you can do like stand up shows or nice. live performances over like Instagram live or Facebook live. So I've been able to see even more like comedy and live music than I normally have time for, which has been really, really cool. Fantastic. Well, that's really great. It was awesome to get to know a little bit more about you. I'm definitely looking forward to doing a follow-up interview in person uh, once we're able to do that. But thanks so much for joining on. Uh, really looking forward to, to working with you a little bit more in the future. Uh, and for the others that are watching this interview, if you would like to be interviewed and spotlighted just like Jesse was, feel free to actually request an interview excuse me, at the bottom of this page. There'll be a little icon that says request an interview. We can also contact me at 1234567891. All right, guys. Well, thanks again, Jesse, for joining us. Really appreciate you taking the time and we'll see you next time. Thanks see so you. much. Now, at this point in time, you don't just end the meeting. Don't just be like, cool, we're done, out of the way. <laughs> Give yourself the opportunity to chat with them uh, after the, the Zoom meeting. Don't just have them end the meeting and, and leave um, just because you want to actually be able to connect with that person, talk to them a little bit about their business, the things that they're doing, just get to know them, just like you would in a normal interview. You don't just leave immediately. You ha take some time to actually connect with them and, and talk about some of the things that maybe you could help them with for their business and the types of content that uh, you're creating to help them and expectations on when this is going to be posted, et cetera. That all can happen later, uh, later in that process. Okay, so that's something to really focus on. Um, now, we'll play through the rest of this. There's only about a minute or and a half left. Um, and then we'll sort of unpack it a little bit more. Now, at this point, Jesse can join off or sorry, jump off, or you can just press stop recording. Now, what you've done here is you've created a short little interview. Obviously, yours will probably be a bit more interesting than the one that I went through with Jesse there. <clears throat> but you get the gist. You have a clear introduction, you have a Q&A section, and then you have a nice finish. You don't quickly jump to the others. You just give yourself a little pause as you need it. And then once that person jumps off the session, it goes back to just being on you. Now you can turn your camera off if you want to do that, uh, just to make sure everything's good to go. But ultimately, 
that's as simple as what you need it to be. Because at the end of this, all you're gonna do is click on end meeting. And what will happen is that automatically as you've been recording, it is going to download the file that you have been setting up. Okay, so it automatically does that and it will download that to your desktop or you can choose to download to the cloud if that's the option that you prefer. Uh, but it's that simple. Next step then would just be to edit off these bits and pieces on the side and I'm actually gonna be using this for my editing and showing you guys how to do this later on. So I hope this is useful, nice and simple, same process as before, except it's a little bit easier because they can just jump on, you can have a conversation first, you don't have to worry so much about background noise and things like that, and then you can really just get started. All right guys, thanks for watching this, hope this was beneficial, see you next time. Cool, so, Initial impressions, questions, thoughts, uh, ideas in regards to looking at that interview that we watched there. Now, obviously, that is not necessarily the standard of interview that you guys will be doing. It was just me and Jesse giving you guys an example. Um, but when you think about these Zoom interviews, it does not have to be this confined sit-down interview. There are so many different ways you could challenge the status quo and actually do it a little bit differently. It's, it's completely up to you. And there's also ways that you can change the appearance and look of the interview itself. Uh, if I go into an example, this interview here that I'm going to go to is an interview that's done on Zoom. It's by Grant and oh, a thank you uh, very client much. And called people are going Arnold. Love it. Uh, so a sponsor called Arnold. And as you can see, like different locations sort of gives a different vibe for that interview. I sit back here because it's just nice and easy and I don't really have too many other spots in my, uh, my Toronto apartment to actually uh, film the interview in but you might have some really cool background. Okay. Now just bear in mind outdoors, like you might think, well, it's going to look really good, but it doesn't capture it in the same way. It will make it very glary as you can see on the right. And you do want to try and avoid like ceiling fans and things like that in terms of the, the quality of the interview, at least from your part, you can't control what they can do. Uh, but you can control sort of what you're putting into this. So if you've got something that's quite interesting uh, in terms of the environment that you're in, could be a beautiful fireplace, could be a lovely bookshelf, could be something that's like a painting or, or a piece of artwork behind you that's just like a nice, uh, I suppose, fascinator. Uh, that can be a really cool thing to put um, in the background of your interview. You do want to make sure that you are um, sort of thinking about the impact of the environment on sound and audio, just like you would with a normal interview. As you can see in this one here, Grant uh, has got his pods in. So that registers both for the microphone and for sound. Uh, Arnold's basically just got the wide version of the same thing. So, you know, if you've got uh, headphones, most of the time they'll, they'll do the trick. You don't have to have a headset like this, uh, particularly this one. This is quite an expensive one. Um, you can just really use the resources that you may already have. Um, but there's nothing wrong with uh, having a conversation into the device itself. It's the same kind of thing is if you're not using an uh, external microphone on your phone and just letting the sound come in here, it's gonna pick up some background noise and things like that too. So these are just a few things to think about. Now, when you add on a little bit of text, a little bit of writing onto this as well, or maybe even an introduction or an outro, it can really change the tone of the interview. You don't have to do the introduction on the Zoom interview itself. You could film that separately. For a lot of sponsors, what they'll do, even for, like for face-to-face -face interviews as well, they'll, they'll do the interview at the business, but they'll actually do the introduction and the conclusion of the interview separately. Okay, so they, they create all the content with that person, but then they also create an introduction and a conclusion once the interview's finished. And they do it at home or they do it on the way, um, way home from the business as well, because that way they can practice it a few times and they're not taking up the interviewee's time with that introduction. So what this means for you is that as soon as this person's left the meeting, you could then say, hey guys, this is Matt from Remax West Realty and today I have the pleasure of speaking with ABC uh, from ABC Company. Uh, I'm really excited for this interview because we're gonna talk about, and then you say the topics that you've spoken about because you know what was said, rather than, oh, we're gonna talk about this and then you guys talk about something else, you know exactly what happened in that interview. So we're talking about this topic, this topic, and this topic. Check it out. It's awesome. Come and write it you now. And then you've got that to play into and you just edit those two pieces of video together. You could do the same for the conclusion of the interview where you film that directly afterwards. Uh, you can, might have done this on the back of your introduction. You can say, wow, 
that was awesome. I hope you learned a lot. I liked how this happened or this information or I learned this. And then that way you're kind of bookending your content where you've got your, your Q and A in the middle. You've got an introduction and an outro that you film separately on either end. You just edit them together. And now you're creating that more refined piece of content. Now that introduction, that outro can just be you on the camera. Nice and simple. Okay. Then you can add on all these titles and things like that. We talk about that more in my video editing sessions. All right. So questions, thoughts, queries about doing these interviews. You could be asking about duration, could be asking about uh, environments, fire those away. However, if you're good to go, fantastic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you where you can find this help sender article. I put it into the local leader group so you can find it that way. But all you need to do is go to help.parkbench.com. That's our help center. Okay. Another way to get there is actually in your site itself. So if you go to parkbench.com and you navigate to your control panel, so the behind the scenes side of your site, and you scroll down to where it says support, what you'll find is a little icon that says help center. So you can access it in the same way just by clicking on that. And then you can type in the article that you're looking for. So uh, you just need to type in Zoom and you'll find you've got one for the coaching and you've got one for how to do an interview using Zoom on your laptop or device. So that's how you can access that article at any time. But you can also find it in the Help Center um, just by searching away or you can find it in the Facebook group too. Cool. So your next steps, guys. Keep getting these interviews booked in. These business owners are, as, as you guys are, are very well aware, having a really tough time. Uh, in Toronto, they just closed malls. Um, basically, everything's closed now. You, you can just get takeaway food and grocery stores and pharmacies. These business owners are sitting at home. They're going through Facebook, stressing, stressing, looking at all this stuff. Be the distraction that is actually going to be that positive impact on their business. They're going to remember that. They're going to remember you as that person that extended a helping hand when so many businesses were focusing on contracting, withdrawing, right? That's going to build those solid relationships long term. Okay. The cool thing about this, no travel now, guys. You don't have to spend money on gas. You can just stack these interviews up as you see fit. Get them knocked out wherever you can. And your schedule doesn't have to be during the day. It could be evenings because people are at home. Uh, well, at least in most areas, they should be at home. So that's what I'd focus on, guys. Getting these interviews rocked up, getting them done, because it's just more relationships and more people that you're impacting with the value that you're providing to your communities. Fantastic. So like I said, any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of the day. I uh, hope this was beneficial for you guys. If you have any feedback about this session, put it into the chat box, right? I'm happy to tweak it, to learn, to adapt it. Uh, this is the first time I've gone into this on a live session. So definitely interested in your feedback. Um, and potentially even if there are other platforms that you're interested in doing your interviews over, say Google Hangouts or Uber Conference, let me know. Uh, and if I can, I'll be creating resources for those two. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. See you later. Cool question from Patty. Will I go over editing Zoom interviews? Absolutely. So there are two sessions dedicated to that in a given week. Uh, just give me a second. The sessions are on Monday and Tuesday, depending on what you are using to edit. Now, the first one is on Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so my last session of the day. I'm pretty much just focusing my, my um, video editing sessions on editing Zoom interviews right now. Now, I do have ones on iMovie. Um, if you've got the option to choose between the two platforms, uh, I would go with Filmora. Filmora is for PC users and Mac users. iMovie is a built-in platform for Mac devices. Uh, I'm going to be specifically getting into that on um, sort of computers and desktops and laptops rather than like iPads and stuff. But I would uh, recommend joining onto one of these. That's what's going to cover those editing using Zoom. They're a bit different from one another. Filmora is uh, a lot more robust as an editor and it has a lot more features that I maybe maybe doesn't have, but still I'll go through how to do that on both of those. Cool. So find those into the coaching sessions there, Patty, four o'clock Eastern standard time on Monday and Tuesday. But if you are a PC user, don't join onto this one. Uh, the Mac one, that's not going to be for you. I, I will make sure to check that at the beginning because I've had people do that and it would just be a waste of time for them.
So Bronwyn asked, how do you make the Parkbench banner uh, on Grant's uh, interview? So that's what is called a PNG. So that's something you can do on Filmora. Now, the way to get a PNG is to email support at parkbench.com and you're going to ask for Parkbench logos. Cool. So email support at parkbench.com, ask for Parkbench logos. They will send them through as what's called a PNG file. It is basically a file with a transparent background. So that way it'll have the writing, the text over the back, uh, over the top of that black background rather than, you know, just having uh, like someone screenshot like a square of the, um, you know, the content and have like the wrong color behind it. Cool. So support at parkbench.com. Ask for the logos. They'll send it through. They've got a bunch of them. Awesome. Any other questions, guys? Otherwise, have a great rest of the day. Um, and we'll get into that. Bethany asked, do you try to keep it short, not too long? How long is a good video? Now, this is something that is going to vary depending on uh, what you're wanting to create. So with Zoom, as there's not too many other bells and whistles that you're gonna put into it, um, five minutes was great. Um, the conversation that Jesse and I had where we asked three questions and did that intro and outro, took about uh, four minutes of that, of that nine minute video. So five minutes, six minutes is absolutely fine. I wouldn't get into like, uh, if you're just creating this, I wouldn't get into like a 30 minute video just because of the time restrictions on Zoom. That's something else you gotta bear in mind. Because if you're taking five, 10 minutes to set up and you wanna have five, 10 minutes at the end, you only really have 20 minutes to work with maximum. You don't have infinite time frame because you only have 40 minutes uh, which each, uh, with each tool. Cool. Awesome. Uh, now Frank mentioned as well, I noticed your voice or why is there a lag in speaking it's simply because I'm playing the video through zoom. So it always takes a little bit of time um, to buffer that, but when you review it, it'll be spot on. Cool. Awesome. Other questions. I'm just having a look through here. Editing program that I recommend for me, uh, my favorite editor is Filmora, Filmora 9 specifically. It is for PC and Mac, and that is why I run coaching sessions on that. There are lots of other ones. OpenShot is another good option. You've also got iMovie. This is for Mac users only. Uh, Adobe has an editor as well. Um, I'm just trying to think of other ones that I've sort of seen or used in the past. Those are probably my main ones. I mean, you could use YouTube if you're wanting to keep it simple uh, because basically that can only trim the ends of the video. It can't uh, add in titles and things like that, but a lot of, other, of these other editors can. Cool. Great question from Lisa. Can you start recording and then stop because something comes up and then start again? For sure. You absolutely can do that. Uh, it just means you'll have to be editing those together later on. That's a great question though. Cool. It will still contribute to the time of the meeting as well. So if you stop and you've played for 20 minutes, you stop recording for, for five and then you come back on, you only have 15 minutes left um, just because you've got maximum 40 minutes if you're going for that free version. Terrific. Now, super important piece of advice, practice. What I would recommend you do is set up a Zoom meeting invite yourself to it on your phone and just see what it's like. So see what it's like for the user using their phone, see what it's like for you, practice, make sure all the functionality works as is required. Zoom may at one point decide to change the features. They sometimes do this depending on what they're offering where they might be like, yep, yeah, the only way to do uh, this style of meeting is if you pay for this one or this is available on the free one or this feature is now swapped to a premium version. So always bear that in mind um, because it is a separate provider. They may change their services that they offer. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so the editing session on Filmora, I haven't got one on editing on iMovie, but you can find this on our YouTube channel. Um, here we go. So. I've made a bunch of resources as it relates to editing, which you can find on our YouTube channel. I've just put this into the chat box for you guys. And what you'll see here is that there are some older resources here, but I've got an editing session for Filmora 
and editing for iMovie. I will be updating these. There's also one for iMovie on your iPhone or iPad because that's a little bit different. I will be upload, um, sort of updating these uh, for Zoom. So I might even include like Zoom specific ones in there. Uh, just I need to record the ones that I'm doing for people. Um, the only challenge is that when there's lots of questions in there, it extends the length of the, uh, the session. So I might, if I've got the time, uh, particularly next week, uh, create like a session solo and then that way it'll be a good exemplar video for you guys to check out. Cool. Awesome guys, any other queries, anything else uh, that I can answer for you guys now about Zoom, about doing the interviews on Zoom? It's very similar to doing the interviews in person. Um, the only difference is that there's a little bit more uh, clicks <laughs> that you have to do, but it's definitely achievable for any person that is wanting to uh, learn a little bit more uh, about how to do this remotely. Awesome. Okay, guys, so I've got another session starting in about five minutes. Uh, the Kiwi salute me, I appreciate that. Um, I've got another session starting in about five minutes. If you are interested in joining, by all means, jump on board. We're gonna be talking about kind of what you can use some of this inside time for as it relates to your social media and creating a kind of calendar for when you're posting, what you're posting, and kind of why you're doing that. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a fantastic rest of the day. See you later.